The following show contains views and opinions that may not be suitable for all audiences. Audience discretion is advised. Welcome to Thespian Talk, everybody. I am your host, Gomer the Ranting Thespian, and my co-host this week is The Cat. Hello, everyone. Yes, and... <laughs> And uh, before we get too much into a little bit of housekeeping to do, because, um, well, af- after uh, this show, well, definitely starting with this show, actually, um, Holly Christine, as, as I, if you follow me on Tumblr or anything, uh, you'll know that she has stepped away from the show. Uh, it's, it's nothing like no big drama happened or anything. She just felt, you know, she felt she just wasn't fitting in. And, and you know what? That's fine. Sometimes it happens. People change. People grow. She had been on the show for, what, how about two or three or four years now? <laughs> so, you know, people change over time. And so, and, and if you guys are worried, oh, is she going to be on the other show too with you? Yes, she is. So, <laughs> so she is going to be on Constructive Deconstruction. We've just got to get that back into back into regular swing as well uh but yeah so in in that sense uh, i i did put out the word there are a couple of people who are wanting to hop on the show in a co-host capacity that way we can keep the rotation going and everything can be all fine and hunky dory um and all that good stuff we're going to be trying to do that just over the next couple of weeks uh get get the new faces in here see see how we gel with them see how you guys like them and depending on how things go, we'll you know we'll pick one of them, and and all of that good stuff. Oh, so that all happened, and also also within the next couple of weeks, you'll you'll he- you will hear like um, my sound quality change a little bit more for the better because I'm getting a new microphone. Fucking finally. <laughs> oh, and a big part of that is through the you know, patrons, my my patrons over on Patreon. They've helped up quite a bit with that. Um, also, I have found a local place that I can actually go and donate blood plasma for a little bit of extra cash, too. So, between the patrons and the blood plasma, I'm able to get the microphone. Yes! So, things are going to sound better. <laughs> oh, so with all of that, how how is your, actually, two weeks? Because we had to skip out last week because of Easter. How how How's your uh, last two weeks been, Kat? Oh, you know, it's all right. I have a, a big physical inventory going on at work tonight, so, uh... I've just been preparing for that for like the last several months, and mm, my my mood will be much better come next week. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> oh yes. So, so yeah. I, I. Oh god. I. I saw you. I saw you like post about it, and like you're. It sounds like your sleeping schedule is going to be fucked for a little while. Well, yeah, because I have to stay up all night to to do the inventory, and then. I have tomorrow off, and then I have to come back in at Monday at my usual 7 a.m. to come back and uh, get back into my normal schedule. I'm like, oh, this sucks. Uh, yeah, I, I've i actually, uh, I, I can kind of relate a little bit because I think, oh, God, how long ago was that? I was working at a, a convenience store like a long damn time ago, and it was one of those 24-hour deals. And sometimes I'd, work, I'd have to work like the overnight graveyard shift or whatever, and then like come in and start a shift like you know a little bit later in the day or or, no it wasn't the convenience store it was fucking walmart because i would work like the evening shift and then come in for the early morning shift barely enough time to go home and sleep it's like oh god damn it uh uh so no it wasn't the convenience store it was walmart but but it's kind of the same thing fucks up uh so yeah point is i can relate (laughs) just a little bit there oh so um so yeah, um, I don't think there's any other kind of housekeeping thing I need to take care of at this particular point. If it, if something comes up, we'll probably just insert it in later. I'll probably just be like, oh shit, that's right, you know, like I always do. Uh, but for right now, we do have shout outs, or or at least I do. Uh, I'm willing to bet Cat doesn't have one. Yeah, I really don't. Yeah, uh, because that, that's how it goes. But you know what? It's fine because you do surprise me sometimes. <laughs> Uh, mine actually is going out to uh, Giant Riella again because she started making videos again. Uh, she's mostly been posting them on her Twitter and her Tumblr. Uh, video. If you look for them on YouTube, I think they're unlisted. But if you go to her uh, Tumblr, her Tumblr is supgina s u p g i n a dot tumblr dot com. Uh, she has been doing a dramatic reading of a new ebook called Stones to Abigail, 
and what, well, what what is what is this about? Who who actually wrote this? And um, this book apparently is one that was written by a big big kind of semi big YouTuber called Onision. Who, who, from what I understand, is very rather infamous among the YouTube community. Um, I'm not going to get too much into it here, because because uh, if you really want to know, go and, and and look him up if if you dare. I have, and I am all the sorrier for it. Um, but she's been dramatically reading his book, and the, her first the first chapter, she I think she takes like an hour and a half or so to get through the first chapter, and I. Well, I didn't watch the entire first one. I watched enough to know that the English, the 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 the, the grammar, yeah, I, I I I don't like to use this term anymore, but the grammar Nazi in me is just weeping, basically, to to put it quite bluntly. Um, yeah. So if you are if you are a, a, a if you are just a big grammar nut, that book no. Uh-huh. But uh, the actual post with the with the playlist she has posted, it's going to be on the thing uh, below the video on YouTube, on the site, what have you. Uh, so you can go and you can check it out at your leisure. I do highly recommend it because she makes it bearable because she is awesome. Ah, so, oh yeah, so yeah, I guess I guess with that we can go ahead and, and hit the news because yeah, this is ah oh, god, and and the first one, Cat, you're gonna hate it. You're I already hate. know what it is. Yeah, you already know what it is because <laughs> oh, we're starting in Missouri. Oh, lordy. I'd just like to apologize for the state that I live in, but I'm not going to because I'm not from here. Yeah, because you're you're originally from closer to the East Coast. I know you were you you were born out of the country like me, but but I think yeah. Either way, we're not originally from Florida and Missouri, respectively. So yeah, yeah. Because we're military brats, and that is awesome. Mm-hmm. Hmm. So, voters have narrowly repealed an LGBT rights law in Springfield, Missouri, according to ballot results Tuesday night. With all precincts reporting, the Greene County clerk shows question one passing 51.43% to 48.57%. We are very disappointed that we didn't have the exact outcome that we wanted, but we are encouraged that the vote was so very close, Crystal Clink- Clinkenbeard... Clinkenbeard, that's a, that's a name. A spokeswoman for the LGBT rights campaign No Repeal told BuzzFeed News. The vote comes after a fierce clash between LGBT activists, act, advocates rather, excuse me, and religious conservatives who invoked campaign themes of Christian-owned businesses forced to sell products for gay weddings and cross-dressing predators lurking in women's restrooms. <laughs> the latter of which is fucking bullshit. Ah, because it, it's like this. When it comes to the whole restroom fear thing, if if a guy is that committed to rape motion, he's going to go through with it no matter, you know, if, if he realizes you are alone in there, he, it doesn't matter. That sign is not going to stop him. You know, it, it's just not. It, you know, it's just no. Uh, the defeat for LGBT rights advocates it's, uh, is also a reverse of momentum. Last week, LGBT organizations around the U.S. successfully pressed, pressed legislatures in Indiana and Arkansas to dial back religious freedom laws that many worried allowed discrimination against gays and lesbians. Springfield's ballot measure concerned an ordinance passed on a 6-3 vote by the city council in October that banned discrimination based on sexual orientation or gender identity in housing, employment, and public accommodations. The new law extended non-discrimination rules already on the books based on tre- race, creed, sex, and disability. So, based on what we've seen in red so far, what the citizens, I'm, 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 I'm assuming this was a citizen's vote, mm-hmm. in Springfield, which is a town, so it, it's, it's one of those, from what I've seen, and what I've been through in my in my in my truck driving days, it's one of those drive through towns. Is you just drive through it and it's like, oh, okay, that's there. Okay, I think it has a truck stop. Maybe it, it's it's what. So one of these towns has said, oh uh, yeah, uh, we we still want to discriminate against them gay people because the uh, Bible, Bible, yeah, yeah, you know. And and the citizens again, citizens vote. Decided, yeah, we we, we, we we still want to discriminate because we're you know, because we're either awful people or we are easily brainwashed sheep. I'm willing to bet it's probably one of the two. Ah, uh, just so 
and, and and the thing, like I said, the the lurking in women's restrooms, really, people, you're going to call that out again? No, no, just just no. Uh, and <clears throat> so and and forced to sell products for gay weddings. Oh no, you might actually have to do your job and put your personal feelings aside. Wah. You know, I, I'll, you know, I am very much willing to bet that if the shoe was on the other foot and somebody came into, say, a a a a, a uh, bakery, I was trying to think of the right word there, and wanted a cake that said something like "God hates fags" or something, and the bakery refuses to do that, to to put that on a particular cake, that there would be a shitstorm. I'm willing to bet that's what would happen. Mm. Just, ah, uh, do you have any particular thoughts before I, I, I pick a little bit more out of this article, Kat? First off, Springfield has little enough going for it to begin with. It's not really a town that you go visit in Missouri um, because there's not a fucking thing to do there. And now I just have even less to do there. Um, I've got like one, two friends who live in Springfield and the rest of it can go fuck itself because there's nothing going for it. Yeah. So first off, fuck Springfield. Mm-hmm. Um, second off, uh, I think it's really, really great that the LGBT rights people were trying to make a positive out of it by saying, hey, but uh, we may have lost, but it was a really narrow margin and and uh we're we're encouraged that so many people did think it was important like i'm really i like that they they came out positive about it even though yeah. it didn't go their way where whereas like the the campaign that wants to be able to discriminate is like yeah this is a great victory and we're awesome and we're you know this is a big step forward the, the big step forward was their words like are you mm-hmm. fucking kidding me this it's is like, not a step forward. This is a step backward. Yeah. Uh, God damn. And I, I, I look at it this way. Either there is equality in this country or there is not. And if there is not equality, then we are taking steps backwards. And if you are not willing to provide equality for all of your citizens, you are a bunch of fucking morons. Exactly. Uh, so, oh, let's see. Let's see. There was a little something. Yes. The Yes on Question 1 campaign complained that under not the non-discrimination law, as a business owner, you have no right to refuse service based on your conscience and personal convictions. If those, you know, there was like a really great political cartoon where like a fast food worker was like trying, was denying a customer service because of his deeply held religious beliefs against eating something or, or getting, gaining too much weight or something like that. It was um, gluttony is one of the seven deadly sins. That, there you go. Thank you. Yeah. And, and it's that's just as stupid as saying, yeah, uh, we don't believe in gay marriage, so we're not going to provide you service. You know, Here, because – Here's the thing. If you don't want people to get gay married, you should probably not get gay married. Mm-hmm. But what the fuck does it matter to you what other people do with their lives? Exactly. If you're yeah. not hurting anybody, then what the hell is it your business at all? Yeah, and guess what? These people who come to your flower, your, your 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 bakery, to to your flower shop, you know what they're doing? They're giving you money for a service. You are turning down money because you know, and this is money that could help save your ass in the future. I mean, it's just it's stupid. It's just very very stupid. Uh, the campaign also warned that LGBT rights gave sexual predators a free pass in public facilities. Uh, rewind a bit, and you'll you can hear my whole thing about public restrooms again. With the addition of gender identity, it gives anyone claiming to be transgender the right to choose with public locker room, dressing room, bathroom, or other previously gender-specific area they wish to use, the campaign said. This new special privilege opens a door for sexual predators to claim being transgender in order to access these private areas. No, assholes. No. This is, this is not what their aim is. They There are people who who identify as male, female, maybe not even either of them. Non-binary people exist. And let, you know what they do in there? 
the, the I would say 99.9% of the people that when they go in the bathroom, you know what they're doing? They're going to the fucking bathroom. They don't give a shit about who's in there or what they're trying to do. They just want to they just want to go take a leak. That's all they want to do. And they want to do it comfortably. Personally, I think it would personally I think the problem will be solved with unisex bathrooms all around, but we'll get there. It's baby steps. Baby it, steps. It, it's really kind of revolting to see that we're still, as a society, using fear-mongering tactics um, very specifically with the idea that people who are not straight are some sort of predator. Yeah, it's just, no. Cause... Like, that's such a cheap, cheap fucking lie that you can always throw out there to scare people. Because people are ignorant and will believe that anything that they don't see as normal is exceptionally dangerous. And if you put, like, sexual danger in there, then, oh, no, no, we can't have, you know, people who don't fuck people of the opposite gender or don't identify as the gender that, quote-unquote, God gave them. You know, like, you just throw the idea that they might rape somebody in there and then, oh, no. Yeah, yeah, and then that becomes especially insulting for me, even though I'm straight, my girlfriend isn't. So you're gonna you're gonna try and call her, who is by far she is one of the sweetest and and most adorable women on the planet. You're gonna call her. You're going to, by definition, by this with your whole blanket statement thing, obviously talking about the the these anti LGBT people who are using the sphere mongering. You're gonna call her a monster because she likes to. She might be into muff diving every now and then. I mean, that's that's horrible. And she's not the only one. There are so many people who are not straight, who are just who are just so precious, and they're just awesome. And you're calling these really good people horrible because you don't agree with the bits they like to fuck? Fuck you guys. And oh. you are and you already said it, but like if someone is a sexual predator and they act upon those desires, they're going to get to you no matter what. If they want to rape you, it like opening the door to uh, trans people and, you know, people who identify as other genders, mm-hmm. you know, opening that bathroom door to those people is not the gateway drug for sexual predators to come in and rape you in the bathroom. If they want it, they're going to get it. It's like you said, like mm-hmm. whatever's on that the the sign of the door is not going to make a fucking difference. Exactly. And oh, here's here's the thing that kind of pissed me off. I wish I'd remember to put the video link in here or something. But the this particular group published a video of religious leaders making the restroom case on YouTube. And here's the thing. It's not just local religious leaders. These are leaders from just out of state even. So you got people from out of state saying, yeah, um, we don't live in your town, but we think you should pass this because fear monger, fear monger, fear monger. God, 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 God. It's just, uh, you idiots. And you people who voted for this. I, I am, I am going to be hesitant to call you outright idiots because – some of it could be ignorance, and some of it could just be, you know, you gave in to the fear-mongering. So the worst I could probably call you are fucking sheep. So to those people who voted yes on this thing in Springfield, Missouri, wake the fuck up and realize that they're not going to harm you. It's, it's, it's not going to harm you. And in fact, if you turn down somebody, as I've said before, if you turn down somebody just because you don't agree with, with them on a religious or, or, or moral level, excuse me, then you're turning down money that could be used to help pay your bills. It's just that simple. You're, yeah. Oh, so so after that, we're going to need a shot. So so take that shot because we're going to Florida. Ormond Beach, Florida, to be exact. A man who was arrested on charges of shining a laser light into the eyes of drivers Sunday night was also found to be hiding marijuana in his rectum, according to Ormond Beach Police. Police said Jesse Rope, 27, of Summerfield, was arrested after a driver complained that someone had shined a laser light at her car windshield, making it difficult for her to see. According to the police incident report, the woman said that she saw the man shine the light into multiple cars and on buildings while traveling on South Atlantic Avenue as well as Granada Boulevard. The report said the woman called 911 because she was afraid the laser light was going to cause someone to have an accident. No shit. Police stopped a car between the 
a car rather driven by Brandy Tate, 28 of Summerfield, Rope was a passenger in the car, so at least, you know, he wasn't driving. Still shit thing to do. According to the report, when police asked Tate if she knew why the why they stopped her, she responded, because Jesse was shining the laser light at people and I told him not to. So, not only is this guy doing something incredibly dangerous, it, he's also obviously not listening to somebody who's saying, hey, this is a bad idea. He also, for some reason, decided, I'm going to make sure I have marijuana stuffed up my ass. He might, he might have just done that when they realized the cops were coming. That's, like, that's probable. Yeah. And it's just, wah! And unless he's found a new way to uh, acquire marijuana into his system without having to uh, go the usual route. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's see. According to police, officers found a device for smoking marijuana on rope and that it tested positive for ca- for uh, cannabis. And and when I first read that sentence, I'm like, wait a minute, did the was the device up his ass too? No, it was just it was just marijuana, just the actual marijuana. That's yeah, that's some shitty marijuana. Uh, <laughs> uh, that was that was horrible. Uh, I, I, I I I sense a pillow being flung at me from Chicago right now. Oh, smoke it if you got it. There you go. <laughs> uh, he was charged. The, the guy was charged with pointing a laser light at a driver, possession of paraphernalia, and other drug-related charges. Because, again, you know, he would have gotten away with having the marijuana if he wasn't an idiot and shining the light into other people's cars. That's just, no, that's not cool, dude. Now you're going away on drug charges, too. Yeah! Idiot! Yes. Yes. Oh... Uh... So our next one comes out of oh what state is this? I can oh Pennsylvania. Yeah, insanity! I have to sign a permission slip so my middle schooler can eat Oreo. That was the text of a tweet by the mother um, of a student who of a student I can read I promise at Welsh Valley Middle School in Pennsylvania, who was dismayed to receive a permission slip from a teacher requesting permission to allow her child to eat a double-stuffed Oreo after it was used in a science experiment. A blogger for Reason.com was sent a copy of the letter, which I am publishing with permission. Now, obviously, I just copy and pasted the whole thing. Uh, but the letter itself is actually going to be shown on the video version, so it'll go up right about now. Uh, the Philadelphia Inquirer sought out the mother who did not want to be identified or interviewed and who who has changed her Twitter account to be visible only to selected followers. Eh, kind of a good idea. The Inquirer quoted the spokesman for the Lower Marion School District, Doug Young, as saying that the teacher was really trying to do her due diligence because there were students with gluten allergies. The district does not require permission of parents for their children to have snacks in class, it said. And the letter, if you're listening on the audio, it reads, Dear parents slash guardians, in science class, the students have been learning about the movement of the Earth's tectonic plates. In order to facilitate learning as often as possible, I try to incorporate hands-on activities. The students will model plate movement and observe Earth's features that occur as the plates move in the simulation lab. They will be using a double-stuffed Oreo to simulate the three types of plate boundaries and the geographical features that are created at the boundary. The students may eat the Oreo after the investigation if this is okay with you. The students do not have to eat the Oreo if they do not wish to do so. Note, the ingredients of the Oreo are listed on the back of this sheet and on my e-board under the attachment labeled Continental Plates Permission Slip. Please complete the permission slip and send to school by Wednesday. Uh, By the day, we'll be doing the lab on this date here. And this is... Is this little... I, I, under, I understand the intent. I understand they want to make sure that, that everything is cool and everything, but this is going a little too far in making in making sure that the kids are safe at school. Like, I mean, it's like this sounds like oh, it doesn't say what grade these kids are in. Uh, no, 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 they're middle schoolers. So if you're in middle school and you know you can't eat an Oreo, I would think that the kid would be able to tell you. Well, see, here's the thing is that kids are assholes, especially in middle school. Mm-hmm. And and I could really see, like, some diabetic kid going, yeah, I can totally eat Oreos. <laughs> and uh, and yeah. then eating the Oreos and then having some sort of diabetic, you know, episode just because his mom won't let him eat Oreos at home. So he's like, yeah, I could totally eat Oreos at school. Yeah. And and then, you know, having some sort of fit or something. Yeah. So, yeah, with that, I guess, but, I mean, 
ah, oh, jam. This is just this is the first I've seen of somebody sending out a permission slip to let the students eat Oreos. I mean, I can understand like if you feel like maybe your kids might have, you know, oh, what was it? Well, 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 if they're diabetic, even, it, you know, you know, sending out a thing. Yeah, we're going to be doing this with the Oreos. You know, if your kid's diabetic, you might want to keep them away from it or whatever, or let me know and 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 all that stuff. You know, having having that kind of communication like that, I don't think a permission slip was necessary, necessarily a thing because that sounds a little too like, oh, oh, well, my my kid has to have my permission to eat Oreo. What? Like like this? Like the mother here, obviously thought, but but the communication, I I, I like the fact that the teacher is reaching out and communicating. I'm not trying to knock that. <laughs> um, you know, letting the parents know, hey, this is what we're going to be doing, you know, this sort of thing. I think it just could have been done a little bit differently, you know, because the permission, like like I've been trying to say, the permission slip is just kind of just, eh. It's a little much, yeah. Yeah, it... yeah just, just just a little much. Um, but but kudos on this teacher for the for opening up the lines of communication. That that I will give. I, I will give all of that. Oh, speaking of lines of communication... There, there are some, there are some uh, occupations and some things that you need to do, or maybe even not need to do. You just want to do it, where communication is not a good idea. You know, if you're, if you're doing things by yourself. Uh, out of San Antonio, a man who allegedly asked permission to rob a house was taken into custody. Police said it happened a few weeks ago, and a new in the. Yeah this place on the city's far west side. I try not to give out addresses too much. Um, according to an arrest affidavit, Danny Acosta stole a microwave, but before he did that, he lifted his shirt, showing a black semi-automatic handgun to a subcontractor, and asked, can I rob the house? When Acosta asked the subcontractor about a home next door to the one he was working on, the subcontractor replied, it is not my house. He told police that he saw Acosta later come out of the home with a microwave. Subcontractor snapped a photo of Acosta putting the microwave in a four do four door black infinity. With that picture, Bayer County deputies were able to obtain the license plate and track down Acosta. Subcontractor later identified Acosta from a photo lineup, and he was and Acosta was arrested and is being charged with aggravated robbery. You idiot! <laughs> Why would you do that? I mean, just just especially if you're going to do it right away. Because you got a fucking witness, you moron! Oh. <laughs> just there, There's something to be said for um, just weeding out idiots in the population. Like, what? How, how are you alive? Like, how have you lived this long and been that stupid? I know, right? It's just... I mean, that's stupid. Even, even for, like, your stereotypical Texas or Florida stupid, that is stupid. It's just... No! No, dude! That's just, you know, getting, you know, okay, getting recon, getting your recon info on the house, fine. You know, that that's one thing. But you don't, you don't just come right out and, you know, not only ask, hey, can I rob a house? But also flash a fucking gun. What is wrong with you? Ugh, the fuck, man? Ugh. Oh, Jeebus. Uh. If anything, you could just, like, walk like in, like you own the place. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> just start taking shit. There you go. That 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 would be a much better thing, because nobody will suspect anything. Uh, at least not right away. Not to the point where they start taking pictures. The only way that would fail is if, say, the subcontractor knew the people who lived in that particular house, and thus could alert, say, hey, uh, yeah, something's wrong here. You don't own that. I know the people there. You know? Oh. Uh, next one is out of... Oh, Quebec. Uh, ha, 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 ha. In a shocking road rage incident, a man can be seen taunting a family in their car with a running chainsaw. Wait, what? What? <laughs> the what? Ter <laughs> the terrifying confrontation happened after two cars were involved in a conflict in suburban Quebec. The video of the incident shows the man brandishing the roaring chainsaw and saying in French, You like this, huh? Oh. The video I'm was sure that's exactly what he sounded like. Maybe. Oh. 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 Maybe the chainsaw... I wonder if the chainsaw sounded like that. Like, oh! Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lordy. 
Uh, the video was posted to Facebook by Karin Kier, or Kier, I don't know how to pronounce it, C-Y-R, uh, who said the man was driving a f green Ford Windsor. Quebec blogger Matthew, Matthew Bonin reported on his website that Sear's car followed the man's minivan so she could get his license plate after the conflict. But the cars ended up in a cul-de-sac, and that's when the man left his car and came towards her with a chainsaw. Police are investigating the incident and are trying to identify the man who could face assault charges. Yeah? Uh, although I don't, I don't see anything about what the conflict exactly was. It was probably just like, you know, just like a, a traffic thing or something. Maybe one of them hit the other and the other one's trying to drive off or what have you. It, it doesn't exactly say, at least not that I'm, not that I'm seeing it, but dude! The chainsaw! What the... What? <laughs> Just... Ugh. Obviously you fucked up somewhere. Otherwise they wouldn't be following you to get your license plate. But... To just jump out at him with a chainsaw, dude? What the hell? <laughs> that's some uh, seriously fucked up shit right there. Because somebody is. could really get hurt. Oh yeah, just... just dude. Again, it's one of those things like, dude, no... No, I I mean, yeah, getting out, maybe, bit, you know, you know, fussing at someone, you know, you know, yeah, that's that's bound to happen, and sure, you know, you you park with somewhere with a person behind you or what have you, and you expect the other person to get out, say, hey, why did you follow me, or or even have a whole bunch, you know, even fisticuffs would be, you know, a little bit better than this. This, can you just imagine what the what the driver trying to get the license plate number would have been thinking? Like, they follow up, like, all right, get the license plate number. Wait, what the fuck? And they look up and see some wacko, probably, you know, just with a, the fucking chainsaw. Ah, wow. Nothing weird there. No, nothing weird at all. Just, just you know, don't, doesn't everybody do this? No. Yeah, I don't know about yeah. you, but when when I feel a little bit of road rage, I just go and get out my handy dandy chainsaw. Oh god, oh god! Concept for art: cat with a chainsaw on the road, with full road rage mode. Oh, that needs to happen. Oh, but okay, we've had we've had a little more silliness, a little more, a little more just head tiltingly. What the fuck are you people thinking? Oh, back to Florida. And yes, we must. Yes, we must, because fuck you, Rick Scott. Rick Scott can fuck off. Florida lawmakers approved a measure on Thursday that would allow private adoption agencies to refuse to let gay couples adopt children. The bill, which passed the Florida House 75-38, to 38, would prevent the state from revoking the license or refusing funding to an adoption agency that refused to let a gay couple adopt a child on religious or moral grounds, Think Progress reported. Supporters of the bill say that the measure is necessary in order to keep faith-based adoption agencies open. Earlier this week, the state Senate passed a different bill eliminating a ban on gay adoption from state law. The Senate measure was seen as largely symbolic because the 3rd District Court of Appeal ruled that Florida's ban on gay adoption was unconstitutional in 2010. So, these fuckers in the Florida House, they're trying to pass a law that to try and get around that unconstitutionality. You, 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 you. We've seen that in other states. These agencies are being shut, shut down, State Representative Jason Broder, the, spills, the bill's sponsor, told the Tampa Bay Times. I don't believe that the state should be able to discriminate against these organizations based on their religious beliefs. It is not discrimination. Their job is to put children with loving and stable families. If those families happen to have two guys or two dudes or any combination thereof and it is stable, and the child is safe, that's where you fucking put them! Duh! It should not matter what your religious beliefs are. I don't care if you think gays are going to burn in the pit of hell. Your job is to put the child in the safest possible place. That's where you go. Fuck your religious beliefs. Ugh. So this is interesting because this bill is very specifically to prevent the state from revoking the license or refusing funding to an adoption agency that discriminates, essentially. Even though there is a law that's saying you can't discriminate. Yeah. Is so, the... so it's not even – like this is like very specifically them trying to get around this law in, in a way that makes the law essentially pointless. 
mm-hmm. saying, look, look, we're going to say that, you know, you can't ban gay adoption because it's unconstitutional, but we're also not going to let you punish us if we refuse to. So, you know, no, no state license licenses or uh, state funded stuff can can get refused or whatever. Mm-hmm. So, like, this is such a violation of church and state. The state has said, hey, look, these are the laws. And you're saying, you know what? That may be true, but we're not going to let you punish us for breaking the law. Yeah, this, that, that doesn't work that way. It's, and again, this it, it all keeps coming back to religion. They think religion trumps law. No, it doesn't. If I remember right, even your own Bible is like, yeah, render unto C- render unto Caesar, assholes. Duh. That doesn't mean, oh, we don't agree with this law, so we're we're going to buy off politicians to make sure we don't have to follow it. No, you receive state funding, your religion goes out the window. Bye. You keep it private like it's supposed to be. Ah. Uh, Democrats also introduced. Uh, several amendments that would have prohibited discrimination based on things like sexual orientation, race, and gender, none of which passed, according to the Tampa Bay Times. Yes, we want to discriminate between what, between what's in the best interest of the child and what's not in the best interest of the child. John uh, Stemberger, president of the Florida Family Policy Council, he told uh, NBC, what's clear with research is that what's best for the children is is it's best to have mothers and fathers. Oh, you're <laughs> you bringing know, that up again. True. None of that is actually true. Yeah, it's just, no, no. Here is what's best for the child. Like I said, stable home environment. It doesn't matter if it's a man or a woman or two men or two women. It can even be single parents. As long as it's fucking stable, that's what's important. That well, is no. all. What's really important is that you pay off people to fake research that says whatever you think you want it to say so that you can throw out, oh, well, look, we did some research that says this. Never mind that we paid people off to get that research to say that. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, my God. Uh, Opponents of the bill made comparisons to the controversial Religious Freedom Restoration Act in Indiana and said that it permits discrimination against potential LGBT parents and doesn't have the best interest of the children at heart. No fucking shit! Of course it doesn't, because they don't they don't care what's best for the children. Remember, these are probably the same kind of Republicans that only care about a child when they're in the womb. Once they're out of the womb, they're on their fucking own. They are just as good as pawns to play in their religious political games. And, 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 oh, hey, when they reach military age, guess what? They could put them in the grinding meat machine that is the war machine. Uh, that, the point is, George Carlin quote here. There. Uh, when agencies choose to accept public tax dollars to find families for children in the foster care system, they should be required to make placement decisions based on the best interests of the children, not the agency's religious beliefs, Michelle Richardson, public policy director of ACLU of Florida, said in a statement. To allow agent, the agency's willingness to discriminate to trump the needs of the children of the state, the, the children the state has hired them to care for, not only shocks the conscience, but is also unconstitutional. I agree. Ah, uh, just, again, I know I'm going to keep saying this until my face is bluer than the blue sky, but you have your religion. You keep it to yourself. You keep it over there. When you come in to work for a government agency that is getting dollar that is getting paid through the tax dollars that are sent in by everybody, and guess what? Not all taxpayers are Christian. There are non Christian taxpayers. They have a say. There are voters who are not Christian. They have a say. And that tax money that, that you're getting and and, and you're you you you're gonna use this to 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 fucking um, um, discriminate against the LGBT people because you don't think kids should grow up knowing that that there is more than just the straight sexuality. No, 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 no. So to the Florida House, fuck you, Rick Scott, fuck you. You look like you eat babies. Moving on, I think. Ah, do you have anything to add? Well. Florida was a terrible enough place to begin with. 
Yeah. Very much so. Uh. Whew. So I think I think I needed to get that out. <laughs> Take oh. a deep breath. Breathe. Exhale. And we move on. Yes. <laughs> A young Romeo who dated at least 17 Juliets at once, bad comparison by the way, including fathering a child with one of them, got his comeuppance after a car accident when the doctors contacted his relatives and all his girlfriends turned up at the same time. Oh dear. Oh no. Oh no. The man from Changsha in Hunan province identified only by his surname Yuan, was taken to hospital on March 24th with injuries not believed to be life-threatening. Oh, that's going to change. His girlfriends and hospital staff were stunned to discover the truth when they arrived en masse to find they were going out with the same man. Changsha newspaper Zhao Shang, Chen Bao, reported on Friday. I probably butchered the fuck out of that, and I... In, wow. One of the girlfriends, who called herself Chao Li said, I've been with, him, been with him for a year and a half. After hearing he'd been in an accident, I cried so hard I didn't have any tears left. I was really worried when I heard that he was in the hospital. But when I started seeing more and more beautiful girls show up, I couldn't cry anymore. She had set up an online chat group made up of 17 of Yuan's partners, and she's, she said she had learned that some of Yuan's other girlfriends had given him money each month, sometimes large sums, with one woman providing him with financial support for nine years. Wow. Whoa. Ah. Uh, wow. <laughs> Not to sound too much like I'm sympathetic for this dude, but man, he had something really good going for him. Yeah. I just. Wow. Wow. Whoa. Like, uh, holy shit, this guy was a fox. Like, what a sly bastard. Jesus, how the fuck do you do that? I I can't even manage to, like, work and date and, like, have a life. How did he have, like, 17 different girlfriends? I know, right? Uh -huh. Wang Fang, another of Yuan's partners, said, We've already had a son together. What can I do now? I don't love him anymore, but I do love my son. Well, you can kick him to the curb. You keep your son. That's how you do it. Uh, another girlfriend who gave her name Xiao Ting said she had believed that Yuan was her Mr. Right, and she had already started to plan their wedding. <gasps> oh, shit. <laughs> More than 6,000 comments have been posted on social media. Some expressed admiration for the man, while others said that the women should have been smarter and discovered his deceit. Okay. The admiration for the guy, well, you know, we, I think we'd kind of be a little hypocritical in, in, in that because I, I can detect a little bit of admiration just because, holy shit, he fucking got away with it. Yeah. But, you know, right or wrong, holy shit, he got away with it for so long. But the, the, one, the part that I have a problem is women should have been smarter and discovered his deceit. See, that's the, the point behind deceit, deception. To pull the wool over the eyes. It's not their fault. It's not their fault that he managed to keep, you know, all 17 of, e of them separate from each other, have 17 different relationships, have several sugar mamas, and a kid. You know, if he's managing to do that, it doesn't matter how smart you are. You, you know, if he's pulling the wool over your eyes, intelligence has nothing to do with it. Just, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> A commenter from Jiangsu province wrote, A liar always acts perfectly. The only thing he paid them were compliments, which are all that women wanting a perfect life will need. So as a consequence, they were cheated on. And no. Cat, uh, um, you are a woman. Mm -hmm. what, what do you, for, for your perfect life, what do you need? Well, I don't need a lot of compliments, that's for sure. There you go. Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> yeah. So if, if, so I'm pretty sure these women wanted and needed more. He, I don't know what he promised them. I don't know what he told them. But it was apparently enough to keep them on the hook. And in some cases, give him money. I don't know what he did. But hey. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm sure in like a couple years he'll be teaching a class on how to do this. Because that's something that a lot of men I think would like. Yeah. 
trouble is, it is kind of, um, you know, uh, um, oh god, what is the word? Unethical, at the very least. Mm. I, I, I will say this. If you, if, male, male, female, whatever, if you are going to try and pull something like this, take a note from this guy. Don't just sneak around with it. There is a thing called polyamory. It works if communication is kept, you know, open and constant. You know, so you avoid situations like this. Just, just saying. Oh, wow. And our last one, also going with a bit of the silly. And this is actually, for me, it's older silly because I had heard of things like this like years ago. Oh, on the Family Research Council's Washington Watch, host Craig James took a call from a listener who asked him if it was possible that the Pentagon had secretly used a gay bomb on America, leading to a rise in the number of openly gay people in the country, reports Right Wing Watch. A gay bomb. Right. That, that's what's causing it. <clears throat> According to the caller, identified as Tom... If you Google Pentagon gay bomb, you will discover an article stating that the Pentagon was using certain chemicals and aphrodisiacs to spray and to put on the soldiers so they are attracted to other men as a weapon in wartime. My question is, and I wonder, did some of those techniques get used on the American people? Just a thought, Tom asked. The former NFL running back turned conservative talk show host stammered a bit before replying, I don't know anything about that. That's the first I've ever heard of it. It sounds kind of out in the left field, like you said. It's out there for sure. No shit. James then turned the conversation around, blaming the country's ills on turning away from the Bible. Because you can't have a conservative radio show without blaming people turning away from the Bible on, you know, blaming the ills on people turning away from the Bible. I think we've moved away from God's word in the Bible. Bottom line, James explained. We're talking about cohabitation. We're talking about homosexuality. My goal in life is when I meet my maker, he says, well done, my good and faithful servant. He could, you know, he could probably still say that and still be gay and still live with people that you're not married to. I mean, you know, oh, hell. Oh, God. When I, when I was in Indy, you know, I lived with a woman. She was a lesbian. They would have had a, they, they probably would have had an aneurysm because I wasn't married to her. You know, there, there was no sex going on, but I lived with her. And she is gay. Just saying. Uh, I try to honor the Lord, he continued. And I believe this country was founded on those principles. No, it wasn't. And men and women raising kids in a home as best they could. There was the Bible as the backbone. No, there wasn't. And I don't know about any spray or anything else taking place other than people getting away from the word of God. No. First of all, first of all, um, this was not founded on Christian principles. I, 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 I hate that we have to keep saying that, but we have to keep reminding people this was not founded on Christian principles. They were a bunch of deists who's, who was like, yeah, um, we want to get away from there because we want to worship how we want to worship. And we don't want to – and we want to make sure our, everybody else around here can do the same thing. Granted, they also say that as they held black people in slavery, but that's a whole different conversation altogether. <clears throat> but the gay bomb. I remember hearing about this years ago on Two Cents where I, I think it was just a rumor or, or somebody just throwing it out there, just being absurd, wanting to use a, a kind of bomb or a chemical weapon or something like like out in the like out in Iraq or wherever, you know, use that to to make Muslim men at least temporarily want to just fuck the hell out of each other, just have this whole Muslim gay orgy. And and I think now bear bear in mind I I'm I'm kind of guessing here, but I'm willing to bet that if that was true and they did try that, their reasoning behind it would be since they would be fighting Muslim fundamentalists. Keyword there fundamentalists. That if they lost control and had a huge gay orgy because of a bomb like this, then when, once the effects wore off and they realized what happened, they would probably either kill each other or they would commit ritualistic suicide that's what i'm thinking they would be going for i'm willing to bet uh so gay bomb what do you think i i think if there was such thing as a gay bomb um and you used it on like just about anybody it would probably do everyone a lot of good first off yeah <laughs> um 
Okay. I'm just saying, there are so many closeted people who just need to get out there and just do it. Yeah. Um, and by it, I mean another man in the butt. There um, you go. <laughs> <laughs> just to get it out of their system and realize, that, yeah, this is okay. Yeah. I can do this. And, and then they'll be less likely to be a huge jerk to everybody who already enjoys it and isn't closeted about it. Yeah. I think it would do a lot of good. Um, oh, yeah. On the other hand, <laughs> I I think that people who claim to hate gays so much should probably not spend quite as much time Googling stuff about gay bombs. Like, I think they enjoy Googling stuff about gays. Yeah. Yeah, just a little bit, you know, because there, there are some things I can understand, like, hate watching or, or hate searching or whatever. You know, I'm prone to it. I, I think everybody is prone to it every now and then. And depending on the topic matter, if, if it's, you know, if it's like you, you, you hate a particular person, but you just want to keep track of them because, ooh, you hate them or whatever, you know, that's one thing. And I guess that's more of an anti-fan thing. And, but, but you know, you hate homosexuality, you hate gay people, but yet you're sitting there looking at gay porn and be like, look at this abomination. Look at this abomination with one hand. Meanwhile, you're under the desk with your other hand. I'll let you, I'll let you draw your own conclusions there. Yeah, just a little bit. Now he he, now he said of uh, leading leading to a rise in the number of openly gay people in the country. This caller had said, "Well, if there is a rise in the number of openly gay people in the country, it's because they're coming out more. They are they are more and more comfortable and safe in coming out. And honestly, and and that this actually got me into a discussion with Becky the other night about the whole thing about coming out in general." Like, uh, you know how a lot of people say don't come out unless you're, like, in a safe position or what have you or what or, or anything like that. But then there are a lot of politicians out there that are in the closet that are passing these kinds of anti-LGBT laws or, or even supporting them. And and I, th- I, think, it was, I think it was Becky who had, who had said, you know what, you know, force them out. If it was her, it was either her or someone else. But these anti-gay politicians that are secretly in the closet out them. The reason being, couple reasons being, one, it shows them as big fucking hypocrites, and two, they're they're not in a position to where their lives would be ruined, like completely ruined, by being outed, because they have the money, they can survive for at least a few years, and and even then, even even if like it was they were outed and they lost their political career, they still have the money, and there will be people that would hire them just because you know. What 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 why did you lose? Well, I came out as gay, and the people didn't like that. Oh, okay, we'll still hire you. Come on in. They 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 would still be in a better position than say a teenager who is in the closet at home, and afraid of you know coming out and being kicked out of the house by their parents. Uh, you see what I'm getting at here? Yeah, 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 yeah. I I, I I'm probably I don't know if I'm wording it the best, but. That that was the conversation that, that that led off from this this last news story here. Um, so if you're a politician, mm-hmm. yeah, it would be easier, or like the, a politician who came out of the closet would be in a better situation than a normal person because they already have a shit ton of money and would be able to survive on their own. Mm-hmm. You know, more so than like the kid whose parent is going to beat them and then throw them out of the house and then they're going to end up on the street. Yeah. Or, or even worse, you know that 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 whole that that gay reparative therapy or whatever. Which, from what I understand, I, I think the White House even spoke out about it. And said, yeah, um, we're gonna we're gonna work and make this shit illegal. Which, of course, the fundies are sitting there like, no, we can't do that because of religious freedom. No, you're harming people, you assholes. Ugh. So yeah. Oh God, there was one other thing involving this article that that was that was brought up. Oh yeah, the the whole you know, like I said, the whole people being more comfortable coming out thing it's just like it's it's another one of those things like you hear about all this horrible stuff in the news that's been going on uh, you know like like the uh, like the cops you know the cops being you know the the, the white on black violence the cop killings and all of that not the people killing the cops cops killing the people i just want to clarify you know and we're hearing more and more and more and more about that the thing is it's one of those things that's been going on probably longer than we think Everybody is just reporting on it more, and and it's something in similar to you know the supposed rise in the number of gay people. It's, no, it's just more people coming out more. That's all it is, 
is just like a news story or, or, or a set or, or a set of news stories. You know, we're just hearing about it more. They, yeah, it, it it's first off, you know, like with the the whole like uh, cops killing people, it's trendy now to po- post about it, mm-hmm. um, and it's safer now to post about it because you, people are like the cops are less likely to take action against you because of the way that the media is now and the way that social networking is. It's easier to get the information around and and without you know putting yourself in harm's way. Yeah. So now it's safer for people to come out of the closet because now they're less likely to get beaten to death. You know, just for liking another dude or whatever. Oh yeah, definitely. And and to go to also go quickly back to the uh, politicians coming out. Well, let's say a politician does come out and he, he or she doesn't lose their position. You know, they manage to get support. That's more representation for the LGBT community in in politics, in positions of power, to where they could do something a little bit more. Of course, the ones that are closeted, they're the ones fighting against it because, you know, the lady doth protest too much. Or, or dude, or whoever doth protest too much. Uh, so, you know, and you, you, you know, the, these guys, they're just kind of shooting themselves in their own, in the, in the foot there. That, that's all that is there. So, representation is good. Representation does matter. And the ones that are closeted and are not representing, well, um, well, let's, let's, yeah. Just, uh, they're doing more harm to themselves like mm-hmm. by not coming out of it but you know a lot of these guys are like married and stuff so yeah. if they did come out it would be more harmful than to just their jobs it would be harmful to their marriages yeah which you know that that's uh, one of those chain reaction things but again they even even with the harmful to the marriages or what have you that it's not going to like totally destroy them to the extent of a teenager coming out at the same time, you know? Yeah, there's going to be some repercussions, of course, but it's not going to totally, you know, it's not going to totally fuck them over. Not totally. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're, they're a lot less likely to, like, kill themselves or something like that, you know? Yeah. Totally. Uh, so, with that, that is our last news story, and we have come up to the end of the show. Uh, been, been a couple of weeks. I think I can tell. <laughs> I, I can... Probably tell a little bit, but you know that happens. We have our lower times, we have our higher times. Um, uh, but um, and and if marijuana was made legal, I don't know how much higher times we would have. But hey, you know, we, we would cross that bridge if we get there. Who knows? I probably won't partake, at least not on a show. That had nothing to do with anything else. So, uh, Kat, where could we find you on the social media if we wanted to talk to you? You can find me on the social medias uh, on Twitter at LabyrinthCat and Facebook.com slash NerdistCat. And then you can find me on my other shows, um, What the Fuck, with Josh Hadley over on 1201beyond.com. And then you can also find me on my other other show, Nerds of the Third Power, which is over on ChannelAwesome.com, This Week in Geek. And we're also on iTunes. Yay! And and so let's see where you can find me. You can find me on the social medias. On Tumblr and Twitter at gomer 21 X, uh, You can find my Facebook fan page, Gomer the Ranting Thespian. Go check it out. I've been putting out more and more of the Gomer Plays Redo series. They, they're, they've they been going up uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday schedules all throughout April and through May. Currently doing Mega Man 3. Hell of a lot of fun, too. Oh, my God. Um, let's see. I also have uh, my stuff on rtgomer.com and nerdvice.com if you want to go check out some other stuff on the on those sites not not just for me but from other people in fact uh steve the wicked he just put up something this morning the morning we're recording this he put up something new having to do with uh back to the future you know comparing the technology from their 2015 to our 2015 it's a good watch go check it out if you got about 10 or 12 minutes to spare um I believe that is it for all of mine, and yes, everything else is there in the audio bumper after the show. So, again, thank you guys for listening. We will catch you next time. Hopefully by then my new microphone will be in and I'll get to show it off. It'll be awesome. So, until then, this is Gomer the Ranting Thespian with the cat, signing off. Thespian Talk is an RT Gomer Productions presentation. Our show's theme is Kick Shock by Kevin McLeod. Find out more at Incompetech.com. If you like this show and want to help support future episodes, head over to Patreon.com slash Gomer21XX. For a contribution as little as a dollar per production, you can get early access to all future productions, as well as monthly Patreon-only vlogs and announcements. Our show's artwork was produced by the talented Becky Hopkins, who can be commissioned by going to Patreon.com slash Becky Hop. 
Check us out on iTunes or visit rtgomer.com for more great shows.